one of the hands, 35 years experience, fell off the rig floor. Bounced once off the load hitch, but it was 21 feet that he fell, and I got to help load him on the ambulance that morning. So it, it, it didn't kill him, it should have killed him, but it, it pretty much ended his oil field career. I had a guy five years ago go up in the Derrick on a winter day, been in Derricks for 30 years. So he goes up, he gets, starts to lean out on the board and has heavy gloves on on a cold winter day and a coat. He doesn't attach himself to the, to the Derrick safety belt. He reaches out for the first stand and falls out of the Derrick. Always important to train on it just in case something was to happen. I can't even. You gotta make sure you do it the right way. That way you can secure yourself and secure the person that you're coming out with you're getting down from Derek. Coming down! Coming down! Coming down! You gotta watch out for these guys. Uh, it's very dangerous what they do. They have a hazardous job. Uh, and uh, anytime they're above six feet, anywhere on the drilling rig, they need to be wearing their fall protection at all times. And you gotta make sure you put that belt on, you know. That's the main thing when you go up there is make sure you have that belt on you. You definitely need fall protection anytime you leave the ground until you get back on the ground. You do need fall protection for the simple fact that a gust of wind, uh, get off balance, lose your balance, get dizzy, something. You have nothing to catch you except that fall harness. In the derrick and you're pulling tubing or something, and you're pulling the stands up and you reach out to miss a stand and you slip, your footing slips. Well, if you have your SLR on, which is a Sawyer block, it is gonna only, you're only gonna fall eight inches. There's a good uh, chance that they can slip while they're climbing the ladder. And the way the SRL works, they'll fall maybe just a few inches and then it'll, it'll catch them. Of course, the derrick is the primary concern, that's true. But we also have floors sometimes they're two foot high, sometimes eight foot high, sometimes ten. So we also have sometimes tanks on locations that may have stairways or ladders that fall protection would be required. We use fall protection on a daily basis out here, whether it's just cleaning, um, riding in a man basket, rigging up, rigging down. You know, on any of the tanks or anything like that anymore, the guys are using uh, they don't use ladders anymore, but more or less hydraulic lifts, and they're still strapped in. And uh, when they are climbing ladders, they're using the climbing devices also. Underneath the substructure, we have uh, some walkways that go by the BOP. Uh, we have a secondary fall protection where they clip in uh, with their lanyard, and it just protects them you know, from falling above six feet. Like above the doghouse, above parts house, the oil house, the lighthouse, anywhere on top of the rig where we have to run the electrical wires. Now basically all of ours is, is up and down a derrick and, and you know that's, a, that's another requirement that's 100% tile, anything over six foot and, and if my guys are climbing up and down a tank they need to, we furnish a, a body harness with two hooks that they can, uh, they can go up and down a tank with. We always inspect their equipment, make sure it's in good working condition. You're gonna go all the way around your belt. You have your shoulder straps. You're gonna check all your clips, make sure they're not damaged or broken. Once again, you're checking the stitches. These are adjustable once you put the belt on. This one is spring loaded. So you're gonna make sure all of those will move. And when you lock the belt in, you wanna make sure that it's gonna snap. And it's not gonna come loose when you're in the air, okay? You're gonna go around, check all your clips, all your buckles. They're not broken or loose or damaged. Turn your belt over, look at the back. Your waist straps aren't broken. Once again, checking stitches, any kind of abrasions, any damages or anything, cuts. You go to the bottom. This goes under your legs. This has to be in place. This is what's gonna hold you up. Yeah, every, every morning I have to, you know, Check my harness bell, everything is okay, you know. Keep clean, check it. If it's not affected, just put it on and go to work, you know. Next step, I go and check my SRL, you know, works. Put it on and go to work, you know, try to work safely every time. We uh, have tailgate safety meetings every morning, and this is one thing we talk about is our safety equipment. They inspect it every day, and if anything is torn, punctured, 
uh, messed up or whatever, that is completely eliminated that day when we bring out a brand new one. Our safety harnesses and stuff that we have that each the Derek man wears, it has to be perfectly fit. If it's too big, he can slide out of it. If it's too loose, it'll fall off of him. If it's too tight, he's very uncomfortable. Check your harness, make sure all the tags and everything's still in place. You gotta make sure it fits you. You gotta make sure it fits around your legs or you're gonna be real sore from your legs if you don't put them real. If you get them too tight, your legs will be real sore when you come down. So you gotta make sure you get a little bit of slack on it. As far as a, a new Derek hand, before we could have anybody go up there anyways, we have to, they have to go through an observation and uh, we do a evaluation on every hand whether it be a floor hand or anybody that goes up to the derricks. The learning how to communicate verbally and uh, by your motions is very important in putting a crew together that will work together. Yeah, it's all about teamwork. I mean, when you get a crew that works together so good, you have less chance of anything go wrong. We have to do it every day, just watching out for each other and, and, and caring about who you work with. We watch him as he go up. We make sure he's in the right place he's supposed to be and make sure he's tied off like he's supposed to be. And we don't move nothing on the ground with any lines unless we make sure he's out of the way so he does not get caught up, wrapped up in anything. We usually pull on our harnesses. Like if we're gonna move into a different situation or a different spot, we always make we always put a, put a little tension and pull into that little harness that's in the back. So. And if I don't do that, the guys down at the bottom will always make sure that I double check it. And they'll yell at me or they'll, they'll, if the pipe's up there, they'll tap on it and make sure I reach around, hang on to it, yank on it, do whatever I have to. And then if I have to switch different positions, they'll watch me do it. And before they even start anything else, it's already done. They know that it's done. It should start with the driller. The driller should, he's kind of the lead safety man on a crew because he's He's their boss, he hires them, he brings them out, and but everybody's got to look after one another. I mean, and that just takes time together. Whether it's day one, you gotta you gotta watch out for the, the new hire just like you do. That Derek Hand has been with us for 30 years. You wanna get it done. And we're paid to get things done, but taking a couple of extra minutes, you know, will save a ride to the hospital in an ambulance. It takes everybody to do a good job and make sure everybody goes home because, you know, you don't want to have an accident out here and have your friend get killed or something. And I mean, it, it takes everybody. We'd hate to see an accident. We'd have to, we'd hate to go to somebody's house and tell them, hey, you know, your dad didn't make it come home because he wasn't following his procedures for his work. 100% tie off means that you're going to get to go home at the end of the day. One slip and uh, it, it can be the, the difference between life and death. And, we always want to make sure that the young kids at home, that dad comes home to them. You know, if you lose that income, you know, uh, you don't get that much money for workman's comp. By the time you get it going and stuff, it'll take a while, you know, so it's better to do it the right way instead of doing it the wrong way or the easy way, you know what I'm saying? And I always wore my fall protection there. I mean, there wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I got three boys and a and a wife at home that are counting on me to come home every day. Wear the right fall protection. It can save your life. Take pride in your job. Work safe. Don't risk your job, your health, your family, the ability to take care of them. Please, always wear your fall protection.